for the union. Hello, y'all. Uh. I was selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back. But no confusion, this a reunion. Hello, y'all. Welcome back. Get murder here. He counting money. He said, can me in the hell with rap. I'm only here to shit on niggas and piss on bitches. Welcome, man. I bought jewelry and bikes, nigga. Black Benzes and white figures. Now I'm out here and I'm looking for more chandeliers and light fixtures. Nah. I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a high nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I'm looking, say, take flight, nigga. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Underdog is offering promos every day all October, so make sure to use code MACECAM or STAT to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash with your first deposit. And remember, you always get a free pick on Underdog, so you can support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog app today. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Kim. Brother, what was, was good, man? Shit, I'm good. How you doing? Really good, man. This was a so, good weekend for football. Yeah, it was, man. Definitely is. Today, we are joined with our analyst, Michael Irvin. I've <laughs> been trying to talk to you for four <laughs> minutes, Mike. Everybody talk to me, man. Y'all go ahead. Right. Hey. <laughs> Don't make me think. Don't make me think that CTE act number will hit. Yeah, it's, it's giving CTE, What's Mike. What's up, man? What's good? What's up, man? How y'all doing? Good, man. How, How you? See you out there in, in I'm Louisville. I'm doing well, man. See you out there in Louisville acting crazy, man. You taking this act on yeah, the we, road, we got huh? us another one. <laughs> you taking this thing on the road, huh? <laughs> I seen you, man. You really think you the reason they won it? I know you believe that. I I, I know you believe that. Absolutely. <laughs> you, gotta say, you gotta say that for the show. <laughs> you Spike Lee out there, Mike. They calling you Mike Lee. Straight up. Straight up. <laughs> hey, ride that wave like I don't know what, man. Why that's so cool. I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I'm a Miami fan now, to be honest with you. Wow. Not because of you Great. or not because of Mike. Because <laughs> that nigga Cam, he got my name and he a nigga nigga. That's, I'm fucking with he on right, nigga right, time. Right. That nigga's right. on nigga time, bro. Right. No, no, right. no media training. Reckless when he talk. <laughs> it's, and out there performing. Yeah. So you can't even. You can't oh. even talk about him he not being media trained too. and not knowing not knowing when to say the right thing and the wrong thing because he won it. I'm a Miami fan <laughs> because of Cam. And he out there doing what he's supposed hey. to do. Yo, you still right, Cam. When, when he when he talked about in that interview, when when two was what's up, two what's up, my nigga two. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah that, that's when I crossed over. That's when I said I'm fucking with him. <laughs> that's when I said I'm fucking with him. You see, I, I actually did real. what everybody else does on the show. I wore the Miami green today. Uh. <laughs> 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 to show my solidarity. <laughs> For my nigga Cam, yo. He locked in, nigga. Definitely locked in. You're on the right side. That was a good game. <laughs> You're on the right side. That was a good game. Uh, I actually have a quick question about that game, Mike. I wanted to ask you. So I know that Restrepo became the 10th player in Hurricanes history to pass 2,000 career receiving yards. Your record stands at 2,423, so he could pass it. Just what's your opinion on him and his game? He's one of us. That's what I tell him every time he makes them plays, man. He's one of us, man. He's earned that, man. I, I, I love it. I, I'm telling you, he comes to me in the game. He said, I'm going to get you one up. And I mean, every time he goes and get it. That's the definition of one of us. You see what I'm saying? So, and he, and he comes over, man. He loves it. Every one of those players on that team believes in him and depends on him. That's when I say he's one of us. I mean, you're that guy that a team, team every teammate going to look at and say, no matter what, if we get a shot, if we get a shot, that guy right there is going to make the play. You remember a couple of weeks ago, I think it was a big third down. The dude caught the damn ball on his back. He was on his back. And it was a big, big, it was a big play. We needed it but to complete the comeback. He caught that first down on his back, man. Yeah, that's what I say. He is one of us. 
Yeah, That's super dope. Well, shout out to the Hurricanes and ha- shout out to Restrepo because they're playing amazing. Excited to see how they perform in this homecoming game coming up. So let's discuss NFL. Yo, 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 no, a lot of people going to take that one of us. I just thought about it. And go a lot of ways with. I was talking about one of them badass wide receivers, but they gonna be like your brother. Oh, I, I just thought, okay, yeah. y'all go ahead and do what you got. Yeah, yeah. Look, look Mike. You know Mike, listen. You at the point in your life where you gotta put fine print to make sure you cover your ass for us. <laughs> make sure. <Right>. You, <laughs> I, I dig it. <laughs> you, you gotta put a disclosure so that you make sure that you that you talking about a wide receiver when you say that. Because you're right. Niggas will take one line and run with it. So you absolutely correct to do that. When I say one of us, I've never been a quarterback or played football on that level. So I meant a nigga nigga when I said it. Right, right, right. I, I meant it with what I said. I meant he a nigga nigga. That's what I meant. <laughs> And I want my words to have what they call that double entendre. Yeah. <laughs> it means, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. You, That's you a know fact. what I'm saying? Yes. That's for real, man. Yes. That's for real. He is. Yeah. And Mike, yeah, y'all got it. Y'all got Mike, it. I wanted to ask you two questions before we get off this topic of Miami. Since um, Cam has had 300 yards, passed for 300 yards in all of the games previously. Do you think he'll be able to keep that up the, during the entire season? Oh, yeah, I, I think he will. I think he will, man, because those boys are coming along, too. I mean, that's that's the whole thing, dude. Watching those guys and watching them grow and watching them have. They had um, a players-only meeting. The players, the, the, that's what they did. The players held a players-only meeting before that last game right before that game. Now, if a player's only meeting is going down and you are 0-6, that's one, one thing. That means what you, you're you trying to find out what the hell is going on. All right, who messed with whose girl? Why are we losing all these damn games? Because we ain't playing like a team. Somebody done did something in here, and we got to try to weed that out. But a 6 and old team having a player's only meeting, the only thing you can be doing in that meeting is doubling down and reinforcing what you've already said. And you're starting to see now the importance of it. And you say, hey, man, we got to get together. Now we got to make sure nobody t- t- uh, nobody messes this thing up. So that, that that's what I like seeing. I, see, I like seeing that kind of leadership. Not from the, the coaches are going to give what they give. But it's got to be handled from the dudes on the football field if you got any chance at doing anything. And every one of them dudes, yeah, they follow Cam. Cam, Cam, he's the leader of that team and that offense, and they follow him, and he has a lot of beliefs. And all of those guys that are catching those passes, yeah, he'll continue to do that. And he'll have to. He'll have to because some of those games are going to win in shootouts. Yeah, that was a good take. And another question I wanted to ask you was um, how, as being like a Hall of Fame player, how does it make you feel when somebody begins to break your records? But the but the thing is, we're so connected. It's the same thing that I try to tell people, even with with eighty eight in Dallas. We we have an eighty eight club text group. We our Miami wide receiver groups. You're never going to be able to erase me. So I want to see you get in front of me. It's the same thing that I tell you guys about any great hey. proud father. If I'm going to be so called father of those those spots, Miami or Dallas. I want my ceiling to be their floor. Step on it and take it higher. It's all good. You can't erase me anyway. All you doing is taking me higher with you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm okay with that. I want Strepo to get his, all of them to get theirs. Now, after you get them all the glory they deserve, I want you to look in the fine print. That Cam would just talk about it and realize I only played three years there. They play four. Okay, and sometimes five and six. Okay, I just seven, eight, nine. That out. <laughs> seven, eight, nine. Oh, and that's what I'm talking about. That's what I you, you did what you had to do in three. Nigga got nine years, nigga. Nine three two, they had three of your college careers in the same career is crazy, bro. Nine years as well. I don't care what the situation is. Oh, it's a unique situation. 
it's COVID and he hurt himself. And it, it's, it's, it's crazy. crazy situation. Shout out Cam McCormick. Because they're still doing their thing, so. But they should hey. be. <laughs> right, 30. Right. Yes, yeah, right, 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 if you right. could get away with it. No, yeah, if you're 30, if you're 30, if you're 28 playing against somebody, 18 and 19 you should be killing. Yeah, for real. Well, shout out Miami. So let's get into the NFL. And we're, not, we're not talking about anybody on Miami now. I don't want nobody. I'm talking to about niggas on Miami. He is. Man. <laughs> he is. We not. I, I said I fuck with we a not. couple of niggas. No, no. And, and, and do that. And do that. See, uh, see, and that's the other thing I got to warn my young beast about about right that. Here comes that old hate now. Because Here we go. people like you just talked about him. People jump on the bandwagon. And I say it's good for college football when Miami's doing what Miami's doing because it piques the interest all around the country. It piques the interest. People tune in. Just like what Colorado does. People tune in. So that's the thing. Now, now, I'm getting... I'm over here trying to pump my boys, get it going. Now here, here come. Well, the, the ACC, the, they, they're saying you can't be all over the field like this, Michael. And they were, <laughs> I said, oh, shit. Here this come. Here this come now. You know what I'm saying? Now, if we weren't undefeated, nobody would be saying nothing about nothing. Now, all of a sudden, well, they're kind of saying that Michael's able to, uh, I, I sat right here, told y'all guys, when I was sitting in. I heard uh, Marshawn Lynch, he's going to be over there. And, and Cal, uh, they had Deion Branch, everybody over there in Louisville. So all the mother dudes show ain't nobody, they ain't going to say nothing to them. But my black ass on the sideline of Miami, now nah, they got to call me. Man, get out of here with that, man. It's only because we said, man, oh, I don't want to hear that, man. We about to be 80 no. That's all I'm saying. I'm gonna be totally honest and I'm not exaggerating. I'm being totally honest. It's just everything I love. Only person I've seen as good as you is Johnny Cochran in the OJ trial. If you're old enough to watch the OJ trial, yeah, he's the only person who out talks you this good. You just spun and diss niggas who was in college for four, five, six, seven years, but then if the same situation's on Miami, it don't count for Miami but every other school account for. If you ever see Johnny Cochran, Google the trial, man. Mike Irvin might have took lessons from this nigga during the OJ trial. The nigga just diss every nigga who played over three years, except if they go to Miami. You one of them ones, my guy. <laughs> you definitely one of them ones, man. You crazy? <laughs> I'm crazy. You wild, crazy. Even crazy. You wild, dog. They're wild. They're wild, man. They're wild. I'm just, I'm just telling the people the truth. You know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Okay. So now let's discuss Deshaun Watson. He was carted off the field crying after an Achilles injury versus the Bengals. The Browns went on to lose 21 to 14, but after their injury, a lot of fans cheered. Jameis Winston had some passionate words, some very passionate words. You guys can see the video. And he said, I'm very upset with the reaction to a man that has had the world against him for the past four years. And he put his body and life on the line for the city every single day, regardless of your perception, regardless of what you thought should happen with him. He committed every single day that I've been here to be the best that he can be for his team. So Mike, what is your reaction to Jameis Winston's words on Deshaun Watson? And then the fans reactions to cheering him when he got hurt. I felt his words. I really did. You know what I mean? And, and, and I, I felt for Deshaun Watson and I thought his words were piercing, very piercing in, in this manner. It wasn't just that he was talking about I believe the things that Deshaun Watson has to overcome, had, over, had to overcome on the football field, even getting back into football shape and all of those things. But I also thought he was talking about just in his spirit, in the attack and what the situations and what he has gone through. And I'm not, not you know, we're not saying who did what or anything. I, I, I wasn't there, but I'm saying just dealing with all of that all the time. I believe, I believe it's like your body just gives out. You know, your body can only take so much. 
and he's putting a lot on his body, trying to get it into fine tune, fine shape to play on an NFL level, and still dealing with all of these different kinds of situations that are attacking him and his spirit. And yeah, that's that's a hard place. And then to see someone go down, and then and and have that kind of reaction. I know everybody, but we all love passion. That's the greatest thing about this game. We we just sat there and talked about how we all like the fool and I'm running around on the football field. It's just it's a great thing and it brings brings the best things out of us. But but when someone gets hurt, you know, th- this is a different place. I don't think any of us want to see anyone get hurt, somebody be main, can't play with his kids the rest of his life, any of that stuff. So the the, the clap doing it is it's just the clapping or whatever cheering is just unacceptable. I thought about it and made it, and I personalized it this way, guys. You know, I laid on a carpet and to cheers when when I was hurt, but that was in a in, in a in an opponent stadium. You know, it was in East Philadelphia. I mean, after all you've gone through, and even after all I had gone through, the best thing that I had covering me was when I was coming back that year. Everybody, every stadium I went in, people were messing with me. I even took, I told you guys about the Carolina thing. Everybody was messing with me. But when I came home, I got protected. Michael, we love you. Michael, we love you. You know, and all of that stuff. So it helped me balance it, you know, and I had to deal with it. This dude, you know, I'm sure he's dealing with it on the road and then gets home and and has to deal with that same thing, man. I just, I felt for him. I just felt for him. You know, I don't wish that on anybody, man. And, and certainly I'm praying for him. I'm praying for his recovery in his body and, and, and re- recovery in his spirit that I think is also broken. Um, When it, when it comes to this situation, um, there's, there's a lot of mixed emotions that you get from, from just people around the league and fans in particular. Um, when you think of them cheering that he goes off the field, one of the things that is going through their mind is the money they spent as an organization, which shouldn't be first, but just given both sides of the coin. Um, they're thinking about the money they spent, all the things he's gone through. If these things are true, some of these things have already been settled out of court. Um, so is, is, is 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 a weird feeling in the in the arena when you got people cheering that a quarterback get off the field. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just so much to consider, and I we don't even have the time to really un 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 undo all the layers that goes with this. But what I would say is this: I'm I, I'm glad he's getting some rest. Um, it gives him great time to focus and to recalibrate. And to think about what he want to do with the remainder of his football career, I believe like some somewhere some poor decisions were made, and that he'll have time to really sit back and think about this and say, hey, "Do I really want to be the Deshaun Watson that I should have been all along?" You know, because when you get this kind of money, there's a different type of lifestyle you have to live. I could only imagine. I know the money that I get. And I know the changes I had to make, so I could only imagine somebody getting, you know, multiples of that kind of money. You you just have to change your life, and I think this goes back to um to people just really needing consultants. They need um mentorship. They need um all kind of things. If you're a Christian, you need discipleship. You need somebody to walk with them and let them know, like, yo, these are the changes you got to make because in life, there's only two ways to learn. You either learn through what's revealed to you or you learn through the tribulation. And it seemed like he's learning through the tribulation, but there's only two ways to learn it. I want to say, uh, I, I heard what Jameis Winston said, and I was mad passionate. Man. Yeah. I was fucking dope with Jameis Winston, considering that he's about to step into the job that Deshaun Watson uh, had. And a lot of, and you know, it always sounds good one way or another when when you, when you uh, a backup quarterback says, yo, you know, he's been putting the work in, da, da, da. Most of the time you're not going to say that because you're happy to be playing. You're like, yo, I get my opportunity now. But like Mike said, when they boo you at home, 
Yeah. It wasn't like it was a road game. When they boo you at home and you have a, not pardon me, a season and an injury and you're crying as you get off the field at home, that's like, yo, I'm, that make me not even if I get better or, you know, he's going to get better. I don't even want to fuck with y'all niggas because it wasn't like it was a road game like Mike just said and everything else. And we understand that all these cities are passionate fans. I understand how frustrating it can be for the fans in Cleveland. Um, what are they, one in six now? Uh, came in the game one in five. Deshaun Watson stinking up. Amari Cooper drove to his next team. Nick Chubb just came back. He didn't, he didn't play good at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the city is in turmoil. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, niggas is mad. So they upset. <laughs> With all that being said, this is the game you chose to play, though. You might get hurt. You're going to get booed. I got booed on stage rapping. I wasn't even playing the sport. I got booed before. When you choose to do this shit, this is the shit that could potentially happen. You got to take all this into consideration when you want to be a professional athlete, when you want to be an entertainer, when you want to be a franchise player. All this shit comes with it mm -hmm. and it's possibilities. Now, do I wish he got hurt? Absolutely not. Do I wish his uh, his, <clears throat> his season was over? Absolutely not. But listen, they actually been cheering, saying Jameis Winston's name the last two, three weeks in the crowd. Jameis Winston, da, 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 da. Jameis Winston, da, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that I wish that this happened in this form or fashion, but Cleveland's like, this what it takes. Fine. Get Jameis Winston out there because he's not producing. Now, everything I just said, that's not the way I feel, but I'm just giving you the opposite end of the spectrum when you choose to be a professional athlete, when you choose to be in the spotlight, when you choose to be an entertainer, this comes with it. Like I said, I, I was booed in front of maybe not 30,000, but at least 12,000 before, and millions watching, actually. So... It comes with it, man. As far as him being hurt, I wish him a speedy recovery. It wasn't like it's a um, concussion situation, which I, I wouldn't even say all the shit I said if it was concussion, CTE protocol and all that. But he'll be all right, and he'll bounce back, and maybe this is the time he needs to get his mental together because I know he's been dealing with a lot the last seven weeks since the season started. Yeah, that's definitely a great way to like take it and explain it. So they're trying to figure out if it is a season ending injury. So Mike, if it is, what does this mean for the Browns and then Watson's career as a whole before we move on to the next topic? Well, listen, it is a season ending injury. That is not the question. You saw that slow mo, that's the Achilles snap. You're not playing football this year. That's it. The question is come down to now is, is this the career ender um, or, or is it certainly his career ender in Cleveland? That's very fitting what, and, and it's very deep what, what Cam said about, you know, do you even want to play here anymore? You know, that kind of thing. And, and, and I know it's the NFL guys and that's part of it. That's part of it. But, but there are expectations put on everything. Those fans and all the people out here, they put expectations on, 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 on players. You know what I mean? If players do wrong, they, 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 they get their way of scolding and they're calling in or tweeting about it and everything. If you're going to put expectations on people to act a certain way and be a certain way, then there should be expectations put on you to act a certain way and be a certain way. And when someone's hurt, we should be human enough to say, okay, that's beyond the game. Let's let them get them off the field. Even if we've been upset and disappointed with how he's been playing, we see him getting carted off. I like to say, okay, now we can we can come up with a rule. If there's a cart coming off, come, there's a cart coming out, just keep your mouth closed. If you're not clapping, if you're not saying uh, a clapping when they do the thumbs up or something like that, you know, that's all. I just want us to be careful with that. I don't want us to put expectations on 18, 19, 20 year old guys that are coming in the league and say, oh, what you do that for? You shouldn't have been doing that. And then let people out here do anything they want 
where people get hurt on the football field. That's all. I just want to make sure we button that conversation up with like kind of like that. But 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 as far as going forward, yeah, that that's the statement. It, he's done. He's done this year. I don't, they can tell you they're waiting on that. I, I'm telling them right now, and I'm not a doctor, and I didn't sleep at a Holiday Inn last night. I slept at a Fairmont. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> right here. <laughs> on Avenue of the Stars. <laughs> so I'm just letting you know. I can tell everybody where I'm at. Don't come running over here either. I'm just letting y'all know. But yeah, yeah, we just got to We got to be better on how we treat human beings in that situation. That's all I'm saying. All right? You know, everybody with Deshaun watching all this other stuff. That's all. That's all I'm saying about that. Mace, how are we feeling about Deshaun Watson's career after this injury? Mm, I think he definitely, definitely is going to need to get out of Cleveland. Um, I think the the feeling is reciprocated um, because he probably doesn't want to be there. They don't want him there. Is is mutual, you know? Like I'm, I'm really not. Um, like callous when it comes to him getting hurt, you you definitely want him to get better. But the writing is on the wall. Whenever somebody gives you that kind of money and you don't perform, they don't have a long like window to allow you to stay on that low level when you're getting paid such a high tier price. That's just business. And you guys do know, wait, one last thing, let me add this too. You guys do know. The crazy part that we should have put in anyway, and maybe that's kind of why they booed also, is remember when this negotiation was going down, mm -hmm. Cleveland was the team he said they had no shot. You got no shot. Was out of Atlanta, uh, so, so Atlanta, they really wanted to go to Atlanta. He told them they got no shot. The only way they got it done was coming to the fully guaranteed contract. So he really didn't want to go to Cleveland. So he would, you see what I mean? I just want to put context around wow. the story. But, you know, so it's just case so those people, some of those people should still remember that also. So that's why they so, was born. Just the three. They yeah. gave up that well, guaranteed so that, money, that came to the highest number. And it, I mean, he, it's not his fault he got hurt, but I'm saying that's why they're born. I'm just understanding it. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, Mike. With that contract, that's what I was going to ask you before you made that statement. Him not, let's say, for instance, he doesn't want to be in Cleveland, Cleveland doesn't want to, whatever, whatever. It's contractually until further notice. Who's going to pick up this contract? Whatever team? Because his money's fully guaranteed, and if he's not in Cleveland, what team would take a chance on him playing so poorly the last two years and all this money's guaranteed? So would you think, he would stay in Cleveland. Would he get waived, or is it another team that would potentially take a chance on him? No, well, they'll, they'll work out a deal, and, and what they'll do is do some offsets. You know, uh, just 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 do easy numbers and say, okay, for the next two years, they owe, they owe him thirty million dollars a year, right? That's what Cleveland owes. They got to pay him that money. But if they trade him, and some team says, okay, uh, we'll do an offset. We'll pay him fifteen million a year. Now they they get to split that. You right. see what I'm saying? You gonna pay him fifteen? I get to say fifteen, right. and then next year you pay him fifteen. I get to say so. Now they pay for one year instead of two. So they'll probably do some kind of offset deal. Gotcha. That'll be a part of whatever trade deal happens. Got gotcha. you. But the shot will still get his money. Yeah, they'll just help pay. No, I totally Deshaun understand. That money. No, I get what you're saying. I totally understand. And then one question off this topic before we move on to the next topic, because I asked more recently, and, I, and he didn't have to answer. So I want to ask you real quick. With this new special teams format after a kickoff, how do you do an onside kick these days? How does that work? Or is that eliminated out the game? Yeah, they still do onside kicks. They still, they'll line up a different way for the onside kicks and give you that opportunity. You know, I was I was I was going through that in my head the other day, boy. At the Miami game, I was wait a minute, where's all this? You know, but in college, we're at college. But yeah, yeah, and because they wait, they wait to set up. They already halfway down the field, and I'm sitting there saying to myself, how would they give a team if this is the have new? We, have football? we seen any onside? Have we seen any onside kicks this year? They move up. I don't remember seeing. Have we seen? Any? Okay. Yeah, I just didn't I see. Know. I, I know that they all the way down the field and got to wait for the guy to ch catch the ball now. So I was sitting there saying, what if it's an onside kick situation? What's the format for that? 
but we can move on. Okay, so now let's discuss the Chiefs. So they're the only undefeated team left after beating the 49ers. 49ers had a brutal 28-18 loss, and Brock Purdy had three interceptions. Sources say Kyle Shanahan lectured Brock Purdy for five minutes at his locker. Purdy listened and said nothing. So, Mike, thoughts on the 49ers' loss and Brock Purdy's performance and also the undefeated Chiefs? Hmm. And, and, and this is why I, when we sat here and talked about it, I picked one five. One five is the difference. That's one five true. is the difference. What we saw today was two great defenses, and they were playing hard. Like you know, they were they were making it difficult for those quarterbacks. You're going to have to do other things to win games, and one five always knows how to do that other thing. That run he had up the sideline, dude, he's not the fastest, you know, but he did some <laughs> little trick thing, and then he went running right on up the side. I said, this dude is just, he's phenomenal. He's phenomenal. Brock Purdy, that was surprising because, and let me tell you what else you're seeing. And, and when I say surprising, I, I don't want to put Brock Purdy down, but the reality is when you're talking about uh, Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers, you know what else you're talking about? That's the same system. Those are the same systems. So both teams' defense gets to see those plays all the time because they get run by their offenses. So a couple of those plays, you could tell they were baited. You know, when, when, they're, when, deep, when the uh, linebacker or cornerbacker is baiting you, he knows the flow of a play because he watches it every day in practice. And then the last second, he breaks off and get an interception. That's baiting the quarterback. And he did some of that with Brock Purdy because he's a smart player and they know. He's always going to throw to uh, do, and make the right reads and throw to the right person. So, so they kind of leave that person open. And then right when he gets ready to throw, they t- d- redirect and go and get interceptions. See, you try that stuff, Patrick Mahomes, he's going to use it against you. You know, he'll be pumping over there. You go over that way, then he'll throw. He's just, he's just the greatest. He, it's 1-5. That's the difference when you're playing defenses like that, that already knows your offense. You got to take it to the next level to move that football and make things happen. That next level, I call the one five level. Everybody can't go up there. You calling them the greatest right now? Did I just hear you say that? He, 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 he the greatest thing right now, slipping his toes in okay. some shoes. Now, ultimately, when, when when it's all said and done, and I we we can't measure, right? We can't measure. But that's what I said before. If he continues to win, and he wins a Super Bowl like this right here, what he's doing now, because too, remember, we talked about it. Tom Brady had to win with this kind of talent. The greatest talent he ever had was when he got Randy Moss. And, 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 and we talked about Patrick Mahomes had Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. And, and he still, he didn't have all that he had. Travis Kelsey is, you know, getting up there and, and, and Tyreek been gone. And he's still continuing to find ways to do it. This is how... He can have less Super Bowl victories and still get take over that goat that that goat call from Tom Brady that I thought was impossible, impossible three four years ago. Now I'm starting to change my mind. Yeah, I mean when it when it comes to the Chiefs, I, when I think about it, it's just it's just like mind boggling how they they just play sometimes bad and still win. Like with all of the all of the interceptions, they still win. And and to me, like, I wasn't really one of those people that watched a lot of football, but as I'm watching the games, I'm I'm thinking like, wow, like there's everybody get hurt on other teams and the teams start performing poorly. This team, there's so many people hurt and we're still winning every game. You got interceptions and you got injuries. And he's still just making a way to win. Even one time when you see him running over the defense, a quarterback is not supposed to be running over the defense. I mean, the last time I saw somebody clear the defense like that as a quarterback, I think that was, um, what's the dude name at um, Ben, Ben Roethlisberg. That was the last person I saw as a quarterback just run somebody over like that. 
I was like, come on, man. When you're on defense and you let Hattrick Mahomes run you over, you you know you got to hear that for the rest of the season. What are you doing down there? It, it, it makes you see how he look better. And then yeah. he looked at him. He ain't going to let a quarterback stare you down like that dude. Like, dude, come on, man. He's supposed to be on the gurney with the spinal um, board under him for that. Right, right. He's still standing up and you on the ground yeah. and looking down on you. No, I said, boy, that's crazy. Dog, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, I told you if we get to this point, um, remember I told you, I said, if we get to this point, it's going to be a three-peat. Remember, you remember you the number? You did say that. Yes. So we're approaching that time. <laughs> right about this time, we're, we're, we're headed to triple title town. So maybe I'm not from Title Town. Maybe I'm from Triple Title Town. Because <laughs> we're looking at a three-peat this year. And whoever got something to say, tell them, you know, Kansas City, man. <laughs> Meet us out there in Kansas City, man. The, the colors is red and gold, man. Who was yelling at Brock Purdy? Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> the locker room. <laughs> See, I think Brock Purdy is still happy to be a starring quarterback with the San Francisco 49ers. You know, he was Mr. Irrelevant, ended up getting in the starter position because players was injured. Then they end up trading. What's that nigga they traded to Dallas? I always oh, Trey yeah. Trey Lance. Trey Lance. <laughs> yeah, and fuck he at, Mike. Fuck Trey at. He's still over there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's still. Yeah, ain't here about that nigga since the trade. Thought they had a backup. Yeah, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that he's still in a position where he's happy to be in this situation. And look, Cal Shanahan put him in that situation, and he's gonna take the verbal abuse to where somebody like Bo Nix said, "I don't give a fuck what's going on. Watch your mouth, Sean." <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna call you Sean when you're talking to me crazy, <laughs> nigga. Fuck is you talking about? But I just think that he's super respectful. He looks like a nice guy, and he's gonna take that verbal abuse to where Kyle Shanahan, you haven't been getting over the hump just yet. And I know you one of these football geniuses drawing these plays up, dialing them up week after week, but it still ain't equal into no motherfucking championship. So you gotta calm the fuck down too a little bit. Back to Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. I said I'm not picking against them last week. Starting last week until they lose. I don't care if they're the favorites, not the favorites. You see this shit? Patrick Mahomes is going to (laughs) figure out a way to beat you niggas. He had two. Actually, no quarterback threw a touchdown today. Brock Purdy threw three. Pat threw two. It's a very good game defensively. They had some great passes. Patrick Mahomes also, besides when he ran a nigga over in the end zone for the touchdown, he ran down the sideline for about 30 yards one play, tiptoed down that bitch. Um, that was an incredible play. It, it, yeah, it was, play. yeah, it was tremendous. I watched that whole game, too. I'm like, yo, these niggas always figure a way to win. And that's it's really not a lot to talk about besides giving uh, week after week praise to Patrick Mahomes. But we also got to give this praise to Andy Reid, man. You know, he's been right. successful – his whole career, he just couldn't get over the hump in Philadelphia. They had one chance when they had Donovan McNabb there and Terrell Owens. Terrell Owens in the locker room, splitting the locker room. Shout out to T.O. I seen him in Colorado the other day, too. Um, but but T.O. know he went in that locker room and split that shit in two pause. And had one niggas fucking with Donovan McNabb and some niggas fucking with him. But Andy Reid, I think, is a really, really good coach. I think he found a a fucking prodigy when it comes to uh, Patrick Mahomes because let's think about this also, man. I know he just recently retired, but damn, Alex Smith, he got jerked around, man. He got fucked over, and he was a pretty decent quarterback. I think his his record was like 22-1 and one when he was in San Francisco. He got hurt for like three, four games, and Colin Kaepernick came in, and he was like, we're just going to let you chill out over here till we figure some things out with this dude. Then he ends up going to Kansas City. He starts one year, and then they draft this nigga named Patrick Mahomes to where all things said and done, we don't see what goes on in practice. We don't see what goes on when they're scouting. So for them to say, damn, this kid Alex Smith is pretty good, but we got one of them ones, which was smart. Um, They got him out of there. And he hasn't had a, you know, I think he just recently retired because of injury. But Patrick Mahomes... 
I don't want to say he's sitting here the best yet. There's still a few people ahead of him, but he is on pace to be the best ever. Not nowhere close. He has a lot to go. He got two chips back to back, which I don't even know. Matter of fact, Tom did do that. But he got a long way to go, but he's right on pace to pass everybody. I'm talking about, I don't got him. Right now, I don't have him pass Joe Montana. And I don't have him past Brady. I think he's right there with Aaron Rodgers. And some people say Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback than Tom Brady, but just because, <clears throat> excuse me, all the things he could do, Tom Brady can't do. Tom Brady was one of the great pocket passes, can't run, obviously can't catch when they're doing trick plays, et cetera. Aaron Rodgers is a little more mobile, and people consider him to be probably the best quarterback. But when it comes to quarterbacking, I, I count what's in the pocket. Of course, if you can run, if you're Lamar Jackson and you can scramble and gain yardage, et cetera, that's a benefit. You know, you Swiss Army knife him by that point. You talking about pure pocket passer? I, I'm not going against that kid, Tom B. So he's still at the top with Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs are looking really good, even when they're looking bad. But can we can't we we we, got, we we can't confuse dynamic with dominance. Okay. With domination, Di- dynamic dynamic is great. Uh, uh, and Aaron Rodgers, when we make the comparison of comparison of analysis to Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, mm-hmm. the dynamic makes it man. Aaron Rodgers must be best. But, but must be the best. But 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 Tom Brady plays the game not as dynamically but with total domination because he's bringing the best out of everybody. So he takes less talent and gets more out of them. So I'm counting in the leadership and all of those things. Peyton Manning went and won a Super Bowl in Denver when he was not, when he was less than his best. So that's part of quarterbacking also, since you got to control all 22. That's why for me, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, that's not even a conversation. Okay. That's also on the other side. Why? Why, for me, when I'm looking at Patrick Mahomes now and Tom Brady, I said before, that it's no con- it won't be a conversation, but the way I'm seeing what Patrick Mahomes do now, I got to grab some soap and wash out my mouth because he's doing it a different way. And he, he's not doing it with all the bombs and all the... Uh, all of the beautiful things that he has to throw to. He's scraping these up, but he's still collecting these up. I got to give him credit for that. That 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 That's quarterbacking beyond just throwing and doing dynamic. That's what I call dominance. Well, let me ask you this. That's a great point, and I like that take. Where do you have Dan Marino in your quarterback list in the top 10? Is he in the top 10? Man, I, I love Dan Marino. He's the only guy, I promise you, when you go into my weight room at home or my my workout room, he's the only guy on my wall of champions that's not a champion. Only guy. But he's on there. I mean, I love Dan. I want to play with Dan Marino. Remember, I'm at University of Miami. They drafted my boy James Pruitt the year before, and I wanted them to draft. I mean, he got to draft me. That might have been the first time I thought I hope for somebody to get hurt on the football field. <laughs> so I better take that back what I say before. <laughs> I really did, y'all. You know, let me. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad I get that off my heart. Because <laughs> 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 remember now, I had already. I met my wife too. She was cheering, and I was hoping for the Dolphins, and I was hoping to get drafted. You know, them jokes over them niggas hitting on my wife, too, man. They were hitting on her then. I said, boy, I get I get drafted. I'm going to take all them niggas' job. They ain't going to be there no more, baby, yeah. when I get there, but they the draft me, you know. Right. But I feel good. I got it off my heart, and I can move forward now in life. Yeah. And okay, I'm sorry, James Pruitt. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, man. But Dan Marino, my guy, the only guy up there. But it's still, dude, I got to hold on to the job of the quarterback. It's not just throwing passes. It's not just running around looking pretty. It's winning football games with the talent you have. What we're seeing now, we got to keep getting Aaron Rodgers all this talent. Just give him that Monte Adam. Just give him Gary Wilson. Keep giving, keep giving, keep giving him talent. Now we're learning. The thing I'm talking about, when it's not just about my physical ability, it's about bringing players up. And and, and I don't know if that talent's still there anymore. Right. 
Mm. The, the thing about it is I didn't ask you none of that shit, Mike. I asked you, where do you have Dan Marino in your top 10? This long, elaborate yeah. answer about everything else. Your players getting yeah, drafted. I got, I got him in there, but he can't be at the top. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. What the fuck the he was dominating? Because you, yeah. according to you, domination is over the dynamic no, 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 shit. No, he was dynamic. No, he was dynamic. Yeah, but that's dynamic. what I said. Dynamic. According to you, dynamic. domination is better than dynamic. That's what you just said five <laughs> minutes ago. Right. Now you got Dan Marino Barry, up there. Barry Sanders was dynamic. It was beautiful. But what I'm telling you, it's our eyes look at and our brain. Look at him, yo. Look at him. We see Dan and we look at him. And we oh. start staring and we give it the credit. We give it the credit of a champion, uh, uh, of being domination. So, 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 yeah, Aaron Rodgers has been dynamic, but he only has one Super Bowl ring. He shouldn't even be in that conversation with those guys. You know what I'm saying? Mm. With, with, with Patrick Mahomes and Tom Grady. Shouldn't even be in the conversation. As as dynamic as he looked doing it, he can't even get in the conversation because we're not dominant doing it. That's what I'm talking about. Now, and, James and, and, Posey got a championship too. Neither do Charles yeah, Barkley. Who you all have? Man. We talk about, we I'm can put the same. Who? Oh, Robert Ory. Who you rather have, bro? Or James Posey. Two different things, though. Look, look, look. Yeah. Look. No, no, no. Let me tell you why the two different things, okay? Yeah, let me tell you. Yeah, exactly. Big Shot Rob. Big Shot Rob. Okay. Big Shot Rob. Okay. Big Shot Rob can't get you there. But Big Shot Rob gets you over the top with that big shot. He'll put ice in his veins for that. Now, now, Charles Barkley can get you there. He just need him a Big Shot Rob on his squad. You see what I'm saying? So if you want to ask me who I really have, I'll take Charles. Martin. I was being facetious. So let's just say, let's just say James Posey. He won one. Would you rather have James Posey yeah, or Charles yeah. Barkley? Man? Who you rather have, man? No, no. It's dominant, it's dominant. Yeah, dominant. Dominant. Yeah, dominant. Yeah, this, yeah this, this ain't playing out right. If I'm grading the essay on this one, I get where you're trying to go, but it's niggas right. who's dynamic who wasn't dominant it's according to you because they ain't won a championship, but that don't mean that they wasn't them type of niggas, though. Just because you ain't win a well, championship. They bad boys. Yeah. But I ain't said they wasn't bad boys. They ain't said that. I'm saying when we, they were bad boys. But what you asked me about was the bad or bad. And the bad or the bad, you got to come Oh, my goodness. Mike, 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 Mike. You might have to Mike, continue God. this discussion. Mike, one, two, five, <laughs> Mike. Please, just one, two, five, man. Dan Marino is right up under. That's right there. Dan Marino is right up under them top five. Let's do that. That's what you asked okay. right there. Dan, that's that. Now, he's not in the bad or the bad. That's the Tom Brady. That's the Patrick Mahomes. That's the Joe Montana's. The Detroit the Aikman's. They got three rings. I can't give them brother. Brother, Troy they ain't got nine of them. I can't what put them number up. is yeah. Dan Marino? Tony Romo up there? Up there? When, he ain't win shit according to Mikey, better not. Yo, so who's at the top five? Romo can't go up there. Who's the, who's the top five, Mike? I just gave you some of them. You ain't got Steve Young up there? No, I ain't got Steve Young up there. He won. Steve Young ain't got himself up there. Steve Young ain't got himself up there. He won three, though. He won three. What are we talking about? No, 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 no. What happened to Lippy? No, 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 no. What happened to Lippy and team? What happened to bringing the players up? The dominance. He got three. He got three. What about Terry Bradshaw? That Terry Bradshaw's up there. Mike, I'm going to walk Bradshaw off. Steve <laughs> Young got three. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, wait, wait. Let me get you, back you to you. You're make... contradicting Steve yourself. Young. Steve Young does not have three. Steve Young wears three, but Steve Young was handy, too. <laughs> oh, you know, oh my want. goodness, Mike. Okay, we've been, Mike. <laughs> Mike, I know you want to roll. We can continue this discussion. No, we'll no, have no. to bring it back. Mike, was he on the field when the confetti wait, 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 wait. fall? No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. So you won't tell me. You won't mean to give him credit because he was on the field when the confetti fell, even if he ain't threw a pass all year. Now, nah, come on, Mike, 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 no, Mike no, chill no, no, out, chill, chill bro, out, you Mike, you wildin' now, now. why <laughs> self? Why <laughs> self, <laughs> bring it back Joe home. Joe Montana for Steve Young, bro. Yeah, come on, this is Steve they, they Young. Joke, they, I, I Put some respect that. on yeah. Steve Young name. 
And Steve led them to that one Super Bowl. What we're saying is saying Steve led them to that one Super Bowl. Now them other two rings that Joe Montana got rid of, handed them to him. Here you go, brother. This is that real hate. If he's the starting quarterback, um, cowboy how he got hate. handed to him? Killer, this is that real no, cowboy hate. Hey, this see, is man. real yeah, cowboy hate. Hey. You, yeah. you see the vein oh, in his yeah, neck? Yeah, this is real cowboy hate yeah, hey right here. Yeah. It well, runs deep. You really hate them niggas. Well, yeah, that, I think that's the same time. Yeah. That's what was going on. Let me yeah. Google oh, Steve I'm Young saying, too. Yeah. You really hate them niggas, I Mike. Love, I love you. I love, you. I love, no, you I love, don't. Love, no, you don't. Even my guy. Now, don't get me in trouble with Steve, but I'm just yeah. saying. I'm he just got saying. three. You going? You going to take two of the rings off Steve's finger? That's crazy. No, man. But 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 no. I'm just saying. But they they handed him a couple. How did they hand him a couple if he's the starting quarterback for three championships? He wasn't. He wasn't the starting quarterback. So who was the starting he wasn't quarterback? The starting quarterback. Would you... Joe Mo was the starting quarterback. I got to Google you this. Play? I remember Steve busting ass for three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. no. Remember, was remember we crazy. kept Steve from getting his. Okay. We kept Steve from getting his. That, that like year we. Steve beat us in 94. Who is we, Mike? Who is we? Me. That's we. Me. We. Me. That's we. Me. I was there. Me, I did. <laughs> I'm That's what this is all about. Yeah, the, the truth is coming out now. <laughs> we no, need no, I, know, I just know it because truth. I was there. <laughs> oh, okay, we can definitely continue this discussion, but we must go to oh, break. Crazy, man. Yo, when we return, we will discuss Aaron Rodgers and the Steelers. Don't go anywhere. Well, now, After last night performance, we gonna do this again? No. Not tonight. I don't think so. And make sure you close the door behind you. When I take the pussy up, man. When I take the pussy up, man. When I take the pussy up, man. I'm Rico fucking strong. Took that horse back. Oh, oh, oh. Baby! Hey, hey. Fast money, money, fresh shit, cash money. Fast money, money, fresh shit, cash money. Moscow mule. I'm back. Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog picks of the day. Today, the Cardinals will play the Chargers. Underdog has Kyler Murray at 259 and a half passing and rushing yards. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Lower. One more time, please. He's at 259 and a half passing and rushing yards, Kyler Murray. Lower. Little nigga ain't getting that. Why you got to be little nigga? <laughs> Marvin Harrison Jr. is at 49 and a half receiving yards. Do you have him higher or lower, Cam? How many? I'm sorry. 49 and a half receiving yards. Marvin Harrison Jr. You should have higher. The chemistry been off, but I'm going to go higher than 50 yards. Yeah, Maybe. higher. Okay, Justin Herbert is at 193 and a half passing yards. Do you have him higher or lower? Mm, lower. I should ask Mike, according to him, they rush, doing the rush attack. I don't know when the pass attack going to start. So... I'm going to go with lower because Mike said that they rushing shit over there. I don't, I don't know when they're going to let the nigga loose, Mike. <laughs> okay. If you guys like these picks, remember, you always get a free pick if you're not already on Underdog. So make sure to support the show. Sign up now and you can make your picks too. We are joined back with our analyst, Michael Irvin. Before we get into the Steelers versus Jets game, did y'all have a question for Mike or you want it? No, I just wanted to tell Mike during, <laughs> during the commercial, I did some homework. You're right. He was the backer for two. I was very mistaken. But when he did play, 
He had a record six touchdowns the year y'all didn't make it. And he also had two years, 92 and 94, he was the league MVP. So I see where all this hatred is coming from towards Steve Young. You fucked your little three-piece shit up. And he was, but not only that, he was the league MVP. Even though y'all won the Super Bowl that year, it was his league that year as far as quarterback is concerned. And then the year that he fucked the three-peat up, in 94, he was the league MVP. I see what this is all about. Mace called it. Yeah. There's some NFC <laughs> B shit going on. And he fucked, he put a little stop to the shit trying to go on. Yeah, yeah. He, he fucked, put a hole up on oh, 88. Yeah, yeah he, he fucked right up. Yeah, man. No, no, no. Steve's my guy, man. You know, I, I worked with Steve for plenty of years, many years at ESPN. Great friends, him and his wife. His kids, we used to roll around and play on the, on the turf together, have fun. Now, I will tell you guys this, though, because I remember the first year I went into the Hall of Fame in 07, 05, 06, 07. So my first eligible year was 05. Steve Young's first eligible year was 05. <laughs> we had been talking about it on TV, going in the Hall of Fame, and, you know, we were working together on the set with, with Boomer Sykes, with Boomer, with Boomer, with Boomer, Chris Berman. I was at at my park hotel when I got the news that I did not get in. Steve got in. Of course, I went home, cried like a baby. She cried like a baby, curled up in the pig, cried. But I got up a couple hours early to go over to the set, make sure everybody get out all the, I'm sorry, Mike, I'm sorry you didn't make it, I'm sorry you didn't make it, because my good friend Steve was coming and I wanted to make sure that when he got there, we had already got out. I'm all. I'm sorry, so we can celebrate him getting in. He, I love him to death. So don't you try to bring nothing between Steve and I. I ain't gonna have y'all try to come between Steve Young and I. I love Steve. What I'm trying to say, he Mike, is this: up. if you didn't bring, if you wasn't acting up. all emotional, we wouldn't have did the due diligence to see all this shit that happened back then. Yeah, man. you made us go look. <laughs> yeah, 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 you made shit hot. <laughs> Definitely did. Y'all the best. Y'all the best, man. <laughs> That's all you can say. <laughs> okay. I tell you all that. So oh, let's discuss the Steelers. The Jets lose to the Steelers 37 to 15. This is with Devontae Adams' Jets debut. Mike, what do you think of another oh, yeah. Jets loss? And then Russell Wilson as QB1. Boy, look, 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 I don't know. Both of them are so juicy. Now, it's huh? going to, <laughs> both of them are juicy. Stop. Both of these storylines are, are real heavy, you know, because we keep giving air and everything and giving them, but we, they're coming up with the losses. In New York, that's going to play heavy, and that's going to be hard. Now you have to vote the album, and you still come away with the same results. As a matter of fact, 31 0 in this, in, 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 once, once they had a lead. Boy, Pittsburgh just ran away with it. Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, they went into that game, Pittsburgh went in that game. When I text my guys over at Pittsburgh that, that Friday, they, I said, man, that, that's gutsy, making that change. You know what they said? They said, hey, we just want to see what it brings us. And bro, them 30 something points. You see what I mean? They, they haven't had that many points in a long time. That was like raining manna from heaven to get 37 points like that right there. So, so yeah, to get 37 points and, and, so, and, and, and still, still remember this now. That was Russ' first game. They're still looking at, oh, is there room to grow into, grow on that and grow into that? Um, those were some incredible plays made by George Pickens. I don't know that you can take that out and say, hey, put that in part of the game plan. We're going to get three of those every game. It just doesn't happen like that. But it does give you a better opportunity with the way he throws that deep ball because he throws it so high. And since the DB is watching you, the receiver, you can make plays like that. Deep ball. That's what it was, though, but that was a lot. Yo. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yep. I mean, when I really looked at this game, I thought the the real the real MVP probably of the game for me was um, Bishop. Yeah. Them them interceptions that he was yeah. getting, that really put Russell in a position to do what he was doing. I thought in the beginning Russell looked really shaky, 
I, I remember the play where things begin to turn around. He he scrambled a little bit through a through a um a pass, and the guy caught it. And it's and he, and you can see where he caught his confidence because you gotta remember Russell didn't play since December of last year. So him playing right now is like nine months, nine ten months later, and and it looked like I was on a plane watching the game, just thinking there's no way that they're playing Russell Wilson over Justin Field. I would I would go on record and say that, but but I, by the end of the game, I was convinced that Russ is back. He's back, and they could do they could they could really be a formidable formidable opponent, but they won't win. I'm just going on a record letting y'all know don't get your hopes too high. Hat trick is still out there. Um, Mike said this a couple weeks ago, and, and I, I just don't know what the fuck be going on when people are trying to schedule things around football. This game came on the same exact time as the WNBA Finals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Mike and Mike may and I've been Mike since you said this maybe about three weeks ago. I've been trying to explain this shit to people, and they was like, "Oh shit!" When you said that the NFL stole Sunday from Jesus, I said, "Mike." <laughs> I told a couple people they said, "Yo, I, Mike is right. Niggas be trying to end church early out here on the West Coast so they could get back home and catch football and all type of shit." You know what I'm saying? That's how important. Uh, Football is on Sundays, but I'm not going to lie to you. I was going back and forth between this game and the Liberty and Minnesota, and the Liberty and Minnesota game was so good that I, I dubbed this shit. I dubbed it. I said, this is a regular season game. This is for the championship. That was one of the best series I've ever seen. I know we're about to talk about that in a minute, but I'm not going to say I'm not going to say it live. I told you I saw this whole game. I was locked into the women's finals, but. I did get a text from Stat's father. You're lying. <laughs> word, of, word of everything I love. Stat father. I, I love the way she looked over there like, you're lying. He's the <laughs> one who got her being the Pittsburgh Steel affair. He, he, he addressed this into her since she was a child. And he has a message for us. He forced her to be a Steel affair. He says. Of course, it's the it's, best it's, team, but you know. Yeah, because you was trained like that. That's like saying if if you was raised in Africa and only ate grapes and peanuts and never had nothing else, <laughs> you're going to be used to grapes and peanuts. But I'm just saying, it's how you were raised. <laughs> grapes and peanuts. I'm <laughs> just, just saying. No, listen, it's, it's how people are raised. This is the message from Mr. Wilson oh gosh. to me and Mace. Mm. Russell opened up the passing game, which opens up the run. I think we got our quarterback. We put in the AFC on notice. You and Mace could jump on the bandwagon before I shut the doors on the bus to the Super Bowl. <laughs> we the standard. Oh, by the way, I'm the bus driver. <laughs> so, Sounds like my dad. <laughs> you know, this is him. This is a text he sent me. And the, probably in the middle, I looked up and I switched the channel. I said, it was about seven minutes left in the fourth in the game. And I said, look at him feeling himself. Yeah. Calm down, Mr. Wilson, all yeah. right? Relax. <laughs> like you said, you're in the AFC, all right? I don't even know if y'all the best team in the other division. Relax, man. You know what he said, Mike, one day? This was last season. He said that the Cowboys are – America's team and the Steelers is God's team. This is what he said. Mm. This is what he said last season. They sick over there, the Wilson household, <laughs> man. <laughs> I don't know how Stats' mother feels about this situation, but it's a sickness over there <laughs> in, in, in Tampa, Florida with the Steelers. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I received that text and I thought I relayed a message, Mace. Yeah, we have, me, we have time talk, to jump. Let me talk to Papa Will. <laughs> <laughs> it was just second quarter. He probably was biting his nails. Probably. Yeah. He probably was drinking a beer on that second quarter. It wasn't until the little flare out left that Echoes caught that um touchdown that he got his confidence. So I understand that, you know, they feeling themselves. But I would say this: the um, the Steelers were playing really great defense. Like 
blocking the field goals. They were blocking the field goals like like this supposed to happen every time. And whoever the special teams coach is, he's doing a phenomenal job. I think we give a lot of credit to um what Mike Tomlin. Yeah. But we gotta start giving that credit to the guy on the special teams. Cause when they block the kick, they they rally around him like he's the head coach. They was giving them mad, yeah. you know, props. So shout out to the Steelers. Yeah. Great second place team, you know. Look forward second to them being runner up consolation game. Third they place. They not even gonna do yeah. that. They not better than Baltimore. Yeah. Hey yo, Uncle, right calm, calm down. So Unk. wait, wait, wait. Now, yo, what, Uncle Wilson, calm down. Consolation game. Are, are you guys saying that they should go back to Justin Fields? And, so they never got 37 points now. No, you, Justin you know, Fields, what, what he just runs well in the red zone. But, you know, once once um Russell Wilson even took that off the plate, pause, he went and got him a touchdown in the red zone running. So I think I saw it in Russell's eyes when pause when he was like, I'm going to get this touchdown in the red zone because they think he the only one to run the ball in when it's time to get um touchdown the red zone. Pause. Did they show Justin Fields during the game? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Couple times. Was it what he looked like? Was he tight? Yeah, very much like <laughs> he looked like he was trying to hold it together. Like <laughs> face help, helmet on. Like yeah. Like, wow. Whole time. Yeah. Um I'm gonna make my uh, comments you know real quick. Oh, you got it, Mike. He know he know the snaps ain't coming back. He know the snaps ain't coming back. It's over. <laughs> I, I, I was sitting there thinking, uh, you know, I, we all were looking to see if he was looking and hoping that Russ mess up. That's what you're trying to read. Uh, is he hoping to mess up? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But but I, I don't think we saw that. And I, I, I love what I, a couple things. I love what I heard him say when they asked about that. I said, that's the Mike Tomlin effect when he said, hey, I obviously didn't play well, play well enough to take that off the table to even give it a consideration, you know, as opposed to him called that, that right there says I'm not causing any issues whatsoever. And then today when, um, when, when Russ played well, the first thing he did was make sure he gives some credit to Justin Fields for getting him at four and two. I just kind of like that they reciprocated both to each other like that. Yeah, because he only got one year on his contract. It's, you know, after this year, Russ is very likely to be out of there. So just hold your composure. You did your thing for six games. Let him play for 10 games. And then after that, it'd be back your team probably. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to make my comments quick because we got to discuss this WNBA game. But shout out to my dad. That's my dog. Literally, after the Steelers games, I'm always FaceTiming him. We recap the games. We'd be arguing, going back and forth. Um... I trust Mike Tomlin. Any decision that that coach makes is fine by me. At first, I was real hesitant about Russell Listen, Wilson. I got to interrupt. I got to interrupt. <laughs> I got to interrupt. Mike I got to interrupt. What's your take? <laughs> no, I'm interrupting. You're lying. Because you wasn't you sure about doing Mike this Tom. last week. And that's what I'm saying. I All trust right? Mike Tomlin. Nigga that's change. the yeah, statement. Yeah, no I problem. trust Mike T. I will that's never crazy. doubt that man that's ever. Crazy. He made the great decision putting Russell Wilson in. I mean, shout out to Justin Fields, but... Even our defense, second half, Jets weren't able to score any points. I think we definitely need to start holding Aaron Rodgers accountable because all the changes have been made to make him succeed, and he's still not succeeding how he should. So the Jets definitely have a problem, but the Steelers were making a lot more points now offensively. Our defense is doing great. George Pickens is making his catches with Russell Wilson. There seems to be a lot of team chemistry starting back up. I know it was at the Steelers stadium, so this is kind of a win that we expected. But moving forward, we have a lot to be excited for. Y'all will hear a lot more takes from me for oh the next games. Goodness. But just had to make that real quick. The and again, Steelers shout out to my really dad. really win this game. I yes, mean, that, really, that, the yes, Jets did. lost the game. <laughs> like... The two, the two picks, especially if the ball hits your shoulder and it bounce off, right. falls to the other player. That yeah. was crazy. But then the, the it was, was crazy. The first one was crazy, and the second one, I felt unfor it was unfortunate for Garrett Wilson yeah. because that's what I was saying last week. I was like, now with Devonte Adams on the team, he has a lot more pressure on him, and people are looking at him sideways because of that missed catch. And of course, Aaron Rodgers probably went and blamed him immediately after, which it is his fault, but. And I know Devonte is like, this is why you oh, throw me the ball. No, exactly. No, literally. This is why you throw me the ball. This young, he's not ready. 
He's, he's gifted, head. but he's not ready. Pause. Sneak that in there like that. <laughs> I, I, how y'all gonna let that sneak that in there like that on Aaron Rodgers? That little dark she shot in his neck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know she saying? went like this. <laughs> Talking about he probably blamed hey, man. Aaron Wilson right out. And, and he day. probably Trained did because he's been blaming everybody <laughs> else for everything except himself. So when do we hold Aaron Rodgers accountable? Like I'm just gonna say it. We've been real nice, but fingers are pointed on you. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about the WNBA game before we close. So Liberty wins their first championship in franchise history with the overtime win 67-62. to However, people are saying they felt like the foul call on Alana Smith allowing Brianna Stewart to make two free throws that sent them into overtime wasn't the right call. The Lynx head coach said this shit was stolen from us. She said that verbatim. So, Cam, I'm actually going to let you go first. What did you think of the call? Then how do you feel about the Liberty's first win? That call was some bullshit. That call, and they reviewed it and still called it a foul. Like, I want the Liberty to win, but I, that call to be straight up and down, that call was some bullshit. It was trash. And for them to review it and still call it a foul, Sorry, but hey, we, that's what happens when you get home court advantage. You got to play for home court advantage. Um, it's a couple things I took away. First of all, congratulations to fucking city in New York. When it comes to basketball in New York City, it runs through the women's sin. It does not run through the men. <laughs> the basketball, professional basketball in New York City runs through the women in the Barclays Center. So shout out to the Liberty. Doesn't run through the Brooklyn Nets. It doesn't run through the New York Knicks until further notice. The reigning basketball champions are the New York Liberty. And James Dolan, you kicked them out the garden. You told them they had to go four years ago. Had to play up in Westchester with 2,000 seats uh, arena. And then Brooklyn took them in. So I'm happy that they got that done. Um, as far as this, this was one of the best series I've seen men and women in I don't know how long. Every game was decided by five points or less. Um, it was fucking dope. It was just a fucking really, really dope game. Um, I have a few things to say about it, and then I'll let everybody say they got to say whether y'all seen it or not. It's, it, go watch Sports Center if you see it, didn't see it. It's just fucking amazing. Spike Lee, you lucky. I had niggas outside Brooklyn ready to tear your ass up if niggas lost. You can't go and keep jinxing us. Niggas was laying on you, Spike. You lucky we pulled it off. It was a time during the game, Mike, and they gonna show it on ESPN. The nigga took a page out your book. He was on all four hands and knees. When I see Spike do that, I say, Y'all swear to God, on the basketball court. When I seen them do that, I said, the Liberty gonna win. This the new shit. When you get on hold, your hands and knees, and, and, and you over 55, you gonna win. I don't know what that's, what that's about. <laughs> but Spike Lee was on his hands and knees on the hardwood floor, and I said, this motherfucker better not fuck this up. Uh, the superstars did not show up. Inescu, oh, I think, Inescu, she stunk it yeah. the fuck up. She was one for 18. Stewie stunk it the fuck up. I'm happy they gave the MVP to the big Bohemian Jones. She deserved it. She was busting ass. Because if they would have gave it to one of them two, this would have just been fucking ridiculous. That's first and foremost. Now, I have two questions for Mace and for you, Mike. Two things. Mm -hmm. Take away from this game, because... The biggest stars on the Liberty, and I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with the Liberty, but it's, it's Stewart. They call it Stewie and Inescu. They, they, uh, Inescu shot one for 18 from the field. And Stewie, she had a terrible game. Very, like, really terrible. When it comes to basketball, outside of Magic Johnson and Kevin McHale, could the two best people be white? And make get get you, get you a championship, mm. because even if they are the two best players and they both are white, they did not win that championship today because of them. Could the two best players on the team, male or female, be white and take you to the championship outside of Par outside of Larry Bird and Kevin McHale? Mace, I think so. 
who, who, what you got for proof? I don't got proof at the moment. Uh, okay, all right. I'm, I'm not saying the care. Yeah, yeah. Because we got Dirk Nowitzki. If you get somebody, if you get somebody, yeah, but Terry, Terry, but Terry Bryce was black. Jason Kidd. Yeah, and Terry, and Terry was the second lead star. Jason mm-hmm. Terry. I, I did the Clay homework. Clay Thompson on this. and um, Luca. Clay Thompson and Luca didn't win. I said, could, could get oh, your championship. Oh, yeah. All right. And come. And Clay Thompson is Bohemian <laughs> too, though. Yeah, I mean, Tatum Tatum and I mean, KP? I mean, I mean, Luke is going, going, going to be KP. Tatum is going to be one. See the see, see Tatum's not white. I'm talking about two. Like when you see Kevin McCann, Larry Bird, you're not confusing their whiteness. I'm talking about nah, niggas is trolling. I'm, yeah, trolling. No, I'm just trying. Who yeah. believe you can? Okay, who, who believe who, you can? Who you got Mike? And I'm not. I'm not arguing. I'm genuinely asking. Two stars. Right, right, and I'm saying I, I said I do believe in him. Like I, I really believe John Stockton was a, a, a champion guard. It just somehow didn't happen in Utah with him, with him and Carl Malone. I don't know. It just Carl Malone is not white. white. Yeah, I said two John white Stockton people. Is. John Stockton is. But we said two, two white people. <laughs> Him and Hornacek. Oh, I, I, I get what you're saying. But, but Hornacek wasn't the best. Yeah, that was, that was yeah, a, yeah. Close. He's saying Hornacek, two that are the one. best. The top two players on your team being white. Can on you your team. Mm. I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I don't know. We, we can't, we don't know if you can get it done. We, well, I'm trying to, yeah, the I'm answer trying is to no. revisit <laughs> <laughs> The answer is no. Because I'm thinking about it. You got Joker. But then you got Murray. Mm-hmm. You, they're, right. they're not both white. Mm-hmm. You got um. Well, it just hadn't happened. If you, you can put the right people you know on, what happened? you got OKC. Yeah, it, happen. it, it happened before Larry Bird Larry and Kevin McHale. They were the two best players right. on Boston. Right. It just haven't happened since like '84 or something like that. Right. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mark Price, Elo didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. That's why I was sitting there wondering. Because well, Inescu, both, both of them has to be. But okay, both of them. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the top two players have to be white. Yeah, that's tough. That's a tough one, dog. Yeah. That ain't gonna happen. Because I was sitting there saying Stewie and Inescu for females. But they, yo, bro, we're for 18. Come on, bro. Yeah. And then the MVP of the, the MVP of the game was Jones. She's black, but she should have got MVP of the series like she's it was. Tough. She's tough. So I, I wouldn't say that those two are the best players. Jones must be has to be one of the top two players as well. So we we don't have two white people since Bird and McHale. Nah, ain't gonna happen. Yeah, I dig it, champ. I was just wondering myself. Yeah. And the second question I have is this: that unless you played so bad, unless you played so bad, and I and I'll end this by asking you and Mike Mason, Mike, this. Um, you know, basically when we when we watch football or we watch basketball, whatever, like if if especially football, you get the injury report, like fucking, like you know during the middle of the week they say if um. McCaffrey's going to play mm-hmm. or possibly, you know, that's part of the rules in football. And you got the same thing in basketball, yo. Um, probable for tonight, possibly for the night. Do you think it's fair that we know when women's cycles is when they, before they play, especially with people gambling and putting money up. And then if you go on one for 18, you got to be on your cycle. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Mike, Mike, we're gonna we're gonna let you handle this question yeah, from the boom boom room. Pause. Yo, cause listen, if people put their money up, don't you think that should be part of the injury report? Dude, I, honestly, in all our seriousness, I, I, I think that's a very intriguing suggestion. It really is. And, and let me tell you, what I, I was watching. Who was it? One of the real famous girls that gave a. Uh, concert the other night, and, and and she, I think it was Katy Perry, was like, and she said, "Girls, I did that on my first day on my beard." I was like, and and you know, people out with them, man, that girl's serious. That's strong. Like it took some. If she did a whole concert on the first day, I myself wouldn't know about that. Right. I wouldn't know about it. But but everybody around me was talking about, boy, that's something. I think if I'm gonna be putting my money, I I like to know more about that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah. That's a legit right. question. That's what I was saying. Cause if you say it's really a legit question. No, because I'm sitting there watching really? it with a girl. I'm, that's who made me think. I, I didn't think about this on my own. Watching right. it with a female, and she said, "Oh, she got to be on her cycle." And I said, "It's interesting." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought about that. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. So I, think, I think especially if you're gambling, that should be on the injury report. I'm mm. mad at that. Okay, well, shout out to the Liberty. It's unfortunate that people are kind of trying to like look at their win a little bit different because of the foul call. But either way, this was a great series by both teams, and I'm excited to see them next season. Well, even if real quick, even with that foul call, they went in the overtime. They, it yeah. wasn't like it ended the game. They had time to get it done. Yeah, for yeah, sure. But, but, but yeah, you understand that. It's better, guys. It is better with New York. That's right. <laughs> When I looked at it tonight, and I, I, I didn't see the game, I was watching the football game, but I saw the highlights, right? And what was the highlight? What's top of the news? It was, it, was, uh, it was New York winning the championship and the Dodgers getting in the World Series. Mm -hmm. And maybe the Dodgers are going to play New York in the World Series. Not maybe, they are. They are. The, Yan yeah. the Yankees are in, the Yankees, mm -hmm. are in yeah. Yankees and Dodgers. Right, right. Mm -hmm. People want the two big cities. To be to be matched up, and I know we like when the other little city creep on in here and try to do one for the old gipper, for the little guy. But really, for us out here and us media here, when the big city hits, the best stories are found. I just kind of like that too. <laughs> His name is Wise Cell Mike, and he stands behind that message. <laughs> And don't let the Knicks get to the playoffs again because the city's going to be turned. Oh, they're going to the playoffs. But, okay. That's what I'm talking about right <laughs> here. Right. But that is all the time that we have for today. Mike, thanks for being here. NBA start tonight too, man. Getting good. Mm. It's getting good. Yeah. We got some, we, we'll be in that fight too. <laughs> we'll be in that fight. Now, hey, hey, why, why like Cal in Dallas, just like Kyrie, Clay comes back? To life now, Clay Thompson. Clay, that's so, man. I, I never thought about it. That's so fitting. His name is Clay because now, see, Dallas is like the Potter. That's why the Potter's house that I go to church with is in Dallas. Hey, Mike, so we gotta like go. Now he said there's a pottery in there. I got it. <laughs> well, like, thank you all for Clay watching. And as always, it is what it I is. Love you, Mike. I'll see you Wednesday, man. See you Wednesday. I got to go off and play in the pottery, man. That Mike crazy. <laughs> Oh, he's still laughing. <laughs> he he got to make his soul laugh. He know he crazy. <laughs>